Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by British and Commonwealth super middleweight champion Lennox Clark. Lennox, how you doing? I'm all right, mate. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Back in training. Well, already. It's good to yeah, hear. I'm, I'm sure there's big, big stuff on the horizon for you. Let, let me just take you back a bit first. When we first set up this interview, I didn't know loads about your background. And then, helpfully, a press release came out from the Frank Warren team. talking. I think it was headlined something like, uh, Lennox Clark, I turned to boxing after getting beaten up by a traveller or something like that. But it yeah. turned out it was in a spa. It was your first ever spa. So just tell us about that. How old were you and, and how did it come about that you got pulled into sparring? Yeah, I was 20 and uh, I was lifting weights at the time. And I walked into a gym where there was a, a ring and uh, there was a, a traveller kid called Irish uh, Isaac Gibbs. And he was... Uh, he was uh, you know, he was a good fighter and like he, he asked me to spar him. So, you know, novice, a raw novice, just broad, like obviously muscle bound novice, <laughs> jumped, jumped in the ring and I got peppered, you know. And uh, every day after after I got peppered originally, I uh, kept coming back, kept coming back. I was taking shots, taking shots, but I was getting, I was gaining a bit more ground. And uh, until... Like uh, obviously, as I was getting more experience, learning on the job, I was I was getting the better of him. And before you know, I was I, I was winning the spars, and then he got to a point where he didn't want to spar me no more. So I, I realised I enjoyed boxing, and I just jumped on, I, ju I just carried on, and uh, I'm uh, I jumped on the white collars, and uh, I'm here now. Well, what were you weighing back then? <sighs> I'd have been about thirteen and a half, but but pure muscle. Yeah. And had you yeah. never considered boxing before? You'd never done a bit at the club or anything like that? No, nah, like I'd never really... Uh, I was always having little, you know, little scuffles as growing up as you do. And then like, um, always been kind of game kid. And uh, it just like, it was mad how I kind of fell into it and found it, you know, just out of trying to revenge my beating against the uh, <laughs> kid that was in the gym. And I realised I enjoyed it. And... Uh, I jumped in the white collars and just, just carried on, you know. And how I, many I white collars did you have? Like, how long were you on the white collar circuit for? Only a year. What it was, I could sell tickets back then. I'm quite a popular kid in my area and I could, like, could sell tickets. So I did seven white collars. Uh, I think I knocked them all out bar one. And it was a bit like, like, I don't want to be turning up, selling tickets to my friends and then just knocking people out because I wanted more of a test. And then, there was a journeyman, Joe Kev McCauley. Yeah, yeah, of course. But Kev was a friend of mine and uh, I used to spar him when I was a muscle-bound robot and I used to spar him. <laughs> and uh, he used to beat me up, but like he could see potential in me and he said, look, you need to get down to uh, Errol Johnson's gym. So after a year of being involved in the white car, I said, I've had enough. I don't want to beat these bums up. I went down to Errol's, started sparring the pros and enjoying it and then, I, like, mate, I just never looked back. It was just something that I really fell into and enjoyed. And what made you switch from the white collars to the pros? Was it just wanting to get that extra test or, or was it people being able to see you more on TV, that kind of thing? No, it wasn't even that, mate. It was just literally just to get more of a test. Kev kept telling me, trust me, man, you can do this, you can learn. Trust me, I, I, I'm up against all the prospects up and down the country. And he said, you can do this. And, and you know, if it weren't for Kevin McCauley, I wouldn't be pro now. And do you still keep in touch with him now? He must be pretty proud of, of where you've gone to so far. Yeah, we do. We share a few messages on uh, Facebook and, you know, we uh, we do speak. I ain't seen him for a while, but, you know, like, uh, he knows what he's done for me and I do as well. He's the man who, who told me to uh, come down this line. And building yourself up and building your record up on the small hall circuit, you must have been kind of learning on the job for your first 10, maybe even more fights. Yeah, I had 12 four-rounders, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, I've had 12, I had 12 four-rounders, but at the time, in the Midlands, it was hard for me to get rounds on the Midlands title because kind of sparring stories and, you know, little things like that, people didn't really want to... I couldn't really get a match for the, the, um, for the uh, area title. So I kind of stayed in the gym. Um, uh, sorry, I stayed at four-round level for a bit. I learnt my craft. And then um, I kind of learned that way. And then ultimately you got your first shot against Lerone Richards for that British title um, and the Commonwealth, of course. And it didn't yeah. quite go your way, but it was you gave a very good account of yourself. When well, that happened... I beat Jermaine, you, oh, go on, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, look, I beat Jermaine Small. 
Um, he was a tough, like I, I give him credit because he was a big learning fight for me. I boxed on a Barry McGuigan show on a Channel 5 Cyclone show. And uh, it was a good way to win an IBO um, Continental belt. I won it on there. I, I did a hard 10 rounds against Jermaine Small and I, I won that. And and then after that, then I, I, I went on to fight the round. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fully aware. Yeah, I know you're not overly proud of your IBO Continental belt. I read some quotes from you about that, although obviously proud of yeah. the win over Jermaine Small, which Jermaine you should Small. be. Yeah, of course, um, yeah. But yeah, you got the shot against Larone, and as I say, it, it didn't go your way, but it was a close fight. Did you think afterwards, because you'd come up through the small hall scene, no one had really done you any favours, did you think, that was my big chance, and now it's gone? Or were you always hopeful it would come again? Yeah, I mean, like, like I always go back to my injury against him. It's something I have to always let people know. I had one hand against him when I boxed him that night. You know, I was only caught or some jabs in my shoulder to fucking be able to use it. Sorry about my language. That's and uh, it was kind of because we just got that chance. It was like my everyone knew about my injury, my coaches, my dad, my sponsor. Be like, listen, you might not get this chance again, son. So you can't pull out of this fight because, you know, you've had to wait this long. You're mandatory. You know, you might get held up for another year. So you, we have to take the chance. And we did. And, you know, like, he, I mean, you've just seen him win a European title. And listen, a one-handed me made him fucking work and I nearly beat him with one hand. You know, I'd knock him out with two and I, and I put my house on that. You know, 100%, mate. I'd knock him out with two. He must be the worst style of boxer to fight when you've only got one good arm, though, as well, because he's a mover. He's not someone who's going to stand in front of you and trade. Yeah, mate, he's frightened to death, you know. Like, listen, I hit him in the 11th or 12th round. His corner team must, it said to me on the night that he didn't want to get out. Like, in the last 12 rounds, he was really struggling with the pace. He didn't like it. He wasn't enjoying it. I've previously spoke to his, you know, his old corner team. and I spoke to him after the fight. He was hurt. And, like, you know, I'd love to, you know, listen, fair play to him. He talked about his one European title, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't leave me with two hands. I'd, I'd, I'd close the gap and stop him. And how well you did do considering the injury, did that make you hopeful that you'd get your chance again or were you worried that boxing politics and all that would get in the way? It, to be fair, I fell on my feet, really, yeah. you know, uh, with uh, obviously Laurent choosing a different career, uh, a different route and going on to the European title, which is probably the best for his career, which uh, I give him respect for that. Um him vacating, obviously, you know, it gave me the British title shot and the Commonwealth title shot. So, from that respect, I thank him. Uh, and, you know, look what I've done. Uh, thanks to Lerone. I, I smashed up Willie Hutchinson, which has put me in a uh, good position now. Was your arm all sorted for the Hutchinson fight? Well, mate, I knocked him out with the right hand and then I finished <laughs> him off on the right and left. So, yeah, it was good, man, because the show that even through the fight I was rusty, but it showed I was actually trying to use that right hand, you know, from the start of the fight, whereas in the rounds, I was chasing him around. And, you know, everyone knows the best shot I get to South was a right hand left hook, or definitely a right hand goes down the pipe, but there was none of that. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm a sore loser. <laughs> you mentioned being rusty. You hadn't been out for the whole of 2020. You'd been inactive. Hutchinson had fought three times uh, during that year. Was that a concern going into the fight that he might be a bit, not that you'd lose, obviously you felt confident, but that it might be a bit difficult early on because he was fresher? Yeah, like, listen, that's going to go through your head, isn't it, uh, as a fighter, you know, being inactive. But I had a big year of building this shoulder back. Um, so for me, I knew I couldn't box anyway. So I got a chance to get back fully fit and, and, and get back uh, using my arm. And it was good. But um, yeah, I did think, listen, everyone knew Willie Hutchinson was going to be sharp for a few rounds. Mm. But um, those opponents he boxed last year, I could go out on the street and, and, and have, a, have a tough fight with a guy outside the post office. Do you know what I mean? So really and truly, Willie Hutchinson being active boxing, that level of opponent, is that really going to put him in good stead boxing against Clark? Which obviously was snubbed the night. Did you expect it to be, A, as short as it was and, B, as devastating as it was at the finish? No, nah, to be fair, I thought, I knew I'd get to him because I knew these little barrages he had weren't going to take me out. So I knew normally he hits him with them in the second round. It looked like it, I was in trouble. I wasn't. 
they lost my balance a bit and whatever. But Willie Hutchinson is used to taking people out after hitting them with those shots. But I knew I'd take them. Like, whenever he'd give it me in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round like that, I'd still be there. And I knew I'd knock him. I knew I'd get to him, but I didn't think it'd be so early. I thought it would have been maybe eight, nine, ten rounds in. I would have got to him. And it was something like a highlight reel knockout in the end. Obviously, you can't plan those, but you must have been pretty happy when you watched it back. Yeah, of course, Matt. I played it back how many times? I think countless <laughs> times I played Imagine it back. It. And, uh, you know, it, it was a shot that I didn't even try and throw. It just come. And, you know, it was a lovely knockout. It was a sweet knockout to end the build-up and end the fight, you know. Um, Willie Hutchinson is a good talent. Hopefully, they can build him back and he has a good career, but... You're just too early for him boxing me. And to be fair, he could never beat me anyway. So, yeah, I shouldn't say it's too early. He'd never beat me. <laughs> yeah, you but... spoke to um, promoter Frank Warren, I believe, after the fight via Zoom. And uh, you said you feel he's right behind you. D did you get that impression on fight night that, you know, you'd beaten the guy they built up? Were they then going to get behind you? Because it's not always the case. Yeah, well, to be fair, Frank... He weren't nowhere to be seen after the fight. We like, like we couldn't see him. But um, it's good that he gave me the uh, the uh, Zoom call, and he's, he's I've had meetings with him since, and he's he's, he's talking, you know, um, like he's keen to work with me and push me, which is a fighter's dream to be pushed by one of the best promoters in the game. Mm. So you know, if he produces and I produce, who knows where we'll be? What's the immediate future for you? When are we going to see you next out? Uh, definitely in July. Um, we've had confirmation of three dates in July. I'm not sure what date I'm on, so I'm, I'm, I'm back in the gym now getting ready for uh, a date in July. Um, opponents, we're not um, fixed on one yet. We're just, we're just working on fights. So, yeah, definitely in July. Is that likely to be defending your titles or going for maybe like a fringe world world type of title, like Continental or something like that? Yeah, that's it. onwards and upwards for me. Um, really, I'm looking in the rankings, whether it's British rankings, I'll fight any of them above me. And world rankings, I'll fight any of them above me again. Um, in regards to my, my British title, if anyone wants it, yeah, get mandatory and I'll knock you out, yeah? That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to give up my titles unless it's something bigger and it's better for my career and my family. But if you, if, if you do get yourself into that mandatory position, beware, you're going to get knocked out. Yes, yeah, so that's a message to everyone who's trying to get my title. Come for it, you know? And in terms of looking up, like you just said, anyone above you you'd like to fire, is there anyone in particular that you've got your eye on? Anyone that you think is easier to make, maybe? Yeah, easy to make. Like, um, we've got, we're, we're in talks with Chudnoff. Um, you know, it's good to see you, Mar Sadiq. He, 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 he uh, had a wicked fight against him and credit to him. So, but I'm watching that show that true enough can be beat. And, you know, I'd love to fight there because I think I can beat him. I believe I can beat him. Leroy Richards, I'd love to fight, obviously. Uh, I wouldn't mind it with John Ryder. Listen, anybody who's above me and has got something to offer me, I'm, 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 I'm more than ready. You must feel still pretty fresh in your career because you didn't have that many white collar. You only started boxing at 20 and you're already British and Commonwealth champion. You must feel like you've got a long way ahead of you still. Yeah, like yeah, exactly that. Like I, like I um, got the miles on the clock. Um, you know, I haven't had many hard fights. So I haven't been, you know, like in the rounds taking sticks. So I do feel fresh. Yeah, I do. I feel young in the game, even though I'm 29. But yeah, you are right there. Great stuff. And just tell us a little bit about your life outside of the ring. Have you got, you know, partner, kids, anything like that? Do you still yeah, yeah, work yeah. when you're not boxing? Yeah, obviously, um, I've got my daughter and my girlfriend. We live together, um, you know, so it's good to bring my belts back to them because they live with me during the camp. They see me when I'm dieting, grumbling, being an Aggie man. Um, and then obviously, uh, I work for my old man. I've got a family business, so it's, it's good for me because obviously we do uh, cars, car repairs and we sell parts we do accident damage repairs as well um, but it's flexible for me you know like my dad will say son at the moment he's telling me not to come into work he's telling me focus on your career and get stuck in he wants me to achieve the most I can in boxing which you know I'm lucky and fortunate to have obviously my old man behind me and my sponsors and to be in the position I am today and how old is your daughter? she's four she's four oh, mate good on. age Four going on 14, mate, bossing us around and that. But, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. 
How yeah. aware is she of what you do for a living? Well, mate, she started putting the gloves on at the minute. And that, <laughs> right. that's my worst nightmare, that is. And uh, she keeps putting them on, saying, daddy, daddy, daddy. So I'm happy to give her a little bit of pads. But, like, I don't want her anywhere near boxing. And, like, uh, but she seems to enjoy putting them on, which is quite, it's quite worrying for me. <laughs> if she's yeah. inherited your power, she might stand out in female boxing when she yeah, finally yeah. gets to that age. Oh, Listen, hopefully she doesn't, you know, I really don't want her anywhere near boxing. She's too pretty for that. And uh, <laughs> try and keep her away on the slide, trying to veer her off to another path. I understand. Um, just before we let you go, just tell people out there, because we always ask when we interview someone for the first time, how they can find you on the different social media platforms. Oh, yeah, wicked, yeah. It's uh, Lennox Clark Boxing on Twitter um, and it's Lennox Leon on, on Instagram. Um, yeah, and Lance Clark on Facebook. Get behind me and follow my training and follow what I'm up to. Yeah, man. Good stuff. And one other thing, you mentioned your sponsors and how important they are to you just now. Just give some of them a shout out if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Amphib Construction, a uh, big part of my career. Um, also, I've got HomeServe who look after me. Um, and my food prep company, uh, Speaks to Beast, they look after me as well. Shout out to all of them because without you guys, I wouldn't be uh, able to be fueled and, uh, and you know, and driving through my camp. So thank you. Great stuff. Really appreciate your time, mate. Um, hopefully, we'll catch up again when you've got a, a fight date fixed and an opponent. Yeah, man. Wicked. Cheers. Good stuff. <laughs>